Kia ora. Um, this is my video for my Kahao ETL program um, week 8. Uh, our um, guest speaker tonight, or last night, uh, was a wahine called Rachel Petero. Uh, she um, was, it was amazing listening to her story and her talk about the things that she's doing in her business as an indigenous, international indigenous coach. Um, and the programs that they provide. Um, indigenous pathway, uh, creating a, being competent of delivering our pathway. And she is the chief executive and founder of a um, organization called Rise 2025, Transforming Indigenous Lives. And it's a, um, a set of programs um, based around uh, Indigenous Wahine leadership, um, which really rocked my boat, actually. I'm going to check that out. Um, she talked about, you know, um, her first part of her conversation was about home ownership and how her parents owned their home and they were 16 uh, when they met and they're still married and had raised two daughters. Both of their parents, um, set of parents, uh, owned homes and the intergenerational preparedness of using that house to help your children into their homes and their homes and, it, and their homes and talking about the ripple effect of that. And if that is not the space that you're in now, how do you um, support your children to ensure that that can happen for your mokopuna? And just like the explaining the intergenerational impact of the things that we do as parents and learning from our parents what um, what we find important and whether that still serves us or you know how do we take that into how do we take what we've seen and learn from our parents into our parenting and what they'll take from us into their parenting you know and all of that sort of stuff she talked about um, distraction being the death of an entrepreneur um, you know, being distracted, being distracted, and in this program we call them shiny rabbits, chasing shiny rabbits down holes that we don't know where they go to, but we're intrigued by those shiny things, eh? And how do you get to where you need to go, or you want to go, without getting distracted? And I'm that person, oh, I get distracted all the time, but my bigger co-papa, it seems that everything that I do kind of connects somewhere, along the way or comes in handy somewhere along the way for my bigger co-papa and so how do you keep a true focus and not get distracted and step into the step into the mana of being an entrepreneur and how do you how do you decide which way one of the questions asked by one of the students was how do you decipher between a shiny rabbit and an opportunity and she talked about um, our values and how as we grow and we age and we learn things and we do all the things we do in our life, our values often change. And she talked about how her three top values at the minute are uh, wealth, security, um, what were they? Uh, I can't remember what they were. But if, if the opportunity doesn't match those three top values, then she says, thank you, but no thank you. And the wahine that had asked the question um, has just been offered this big flash chief executive role in Australia. And, you know, she was saying, how do I know it's not a shiny rabbit? How do I, you know, and that, that was the advice given. And I really, I really like the idea of that. And, you know, um, in my world, opportunities happen all the time. And, and that job offers all the time. Um, and, you know, kind of what I think of is does it sit with my bigger purpose does it have a, a ripple effect to the size that I I want to be associated to and is it the right audience is kind of what I think but maybe that's something for me to think about is is um, does it match my values and most things um, I do for a reason I, I'm not I do think things through every which way I've got a really analytical brain so I do work things through 
and I'm a catastrophizer as well. And so I f try and figure it all out before I make a decision. Um, so once I've made a decision, I'll stick by that decision, uh, right or wrong, and deal with the consequences of that. And it's just, just how I am. Um, so I'm going to put some more thought into when I'm making those decisions, basing them, putting more thought into what my, my top priorities are and my top values, and adding that to the method that I already use. Um, to, to I think I've made some really good choices, um, and, and it all, always kind of sort of works out. And if I get, I get uneasy, then... I'll change my direction and, and I'm okay about that. So that was, I really found that really intriguing. Um, and she said, you know, ask yourself the question when these opportunities are coming up and interesting, some of the conversations I've been having with my friends lately um, have been about that, you know, we're getting opportunity after opportunity just arriving on our doorstep and how do we follow the right Kawa or the right uh, modi of where we're trying to go you know when everybody wants a little piece of you and you know I've been stretched really thin lately and some conversations that I've had about with people that care about me recently has been about how thin I've stretched it so um, thinking about what why you started your business what is your priority for starting your business, what what were you trying to do, and does these opportunities fit with that, or are you taking the best opportunity because it's got the best money, or are you taking that opportunity because it strikes your ego, or because you you know, or is it you taking it because you've got stuff, some stuff to learn there, you've got um, something amazing to offer into that space, however long you're in that space. Does it match with where your vision is? A eh? um, one of the things I've been tossing up around at the minute for next year is my masters. Which masters um, I'm going to do and which training between a masters and um, uh, it's a counselling and alcohol and drug addiction because that fits with my my big picture of where I'm going, the addiction training, but I really want to be a doctor. And so I'm tossing up between that and thinking about actually what is my priority? Do I want to be a doctor or do I want to have another qualification to contribute to my bigger vision? I don't know how many qualifications I think I need. However, I think that that's important. So I've chosen, I've turned down two master's programs this for next year and um, chosen to do the, the counselling, um, alcohol and drug addictions counselling. Um, so yeah, really putting lots of thought into why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, but you know, you have your drive and you have your vision, but there's still the passion of I want, I want to be a doctor so that I can help other way can you see that that it's really possible and I'm the kind of person that I'll probably have both one day um, if I work hard enough um, so her, her program um, her program started and her why at the time she'd been all over the world working all over the world doing amazing amazing things growing talent um, in the corporate world and she came home to New Zealand, um, came home to New Zealand and saw that there was no high-level corporate Māori coaches, Māori wahine coaches, and um, very few women in those corporate roles. Um, and, you know, um, if you've you know, if you're rolling in that world, you know that there's very few, well, it is improving, but um, because of women like Rachel um, creating that, that inner power eh, to stand in your mana in a male-dominated space. Um, a takeaway, the first, she wanted us to take two things away. Distraction is the death of an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. And the second was always invest in much in yourself 
and your development as you do in your business. And I'm an avid learner, um, and so I've been training, feels like forever, it probably is. I've had maybe six months off in the last 18 years of training, um, and I, I really value the importance, I really put high importance on being educated and knowing what I'm talking about. And so, um, in saying that, it's been a little bit detrimental, to, well not detrimental, but a little bit of a challenge when I apply for some roles because of the qualifications that I have, sometimes I don't get the interviews because of because of that. But that's okay. It's their loss is how I see it. Um, understanding that change doesn't happen quickly uh, when you're working for the collective good. That it's sometimes a slow process and you have to have all of the stages, like you don't just, um, when you're working for the collective, it's not just about you, it's how you prepare the people around you, how you create platforms for change or platforms for opportunity, um, and not just strive for yourself. How do you share that knowledge that you have? How do you um, encourage and grow the people around you as well and take people with you? Um, as opposed to just going by yourself and you being very successful but it's a lonely place, eh, by yourself um, that's my whakaro, anyway um, a woman that um, was my boss for a long time um, I, I was privileged to be able to pick at her mind and she allowed me to do that um, ask her some of those hard questions what, how did you get to that decision can you talk because that's not where I would have went. How did you get there? And so she would talk to me about if I went this way, the DHB would do this. If I went this way. And so she would talk me through that. And I remember sitting in her office one morning and I was really, really frustrated with something that I was trying to do. And I said to her, is that chair really lonely? And she said, yep, it's the loneliest place in the world. And started singing a song to me. Um, but I'll never forget the look on her face when she looked at me and she said, it's lonely, but it's worth it. And I'll never forget that. And I've been in places and spaces where it is. You feel like you're the only person in the world and everybody's trying to take you out. But that's what I remember. Um, and her name was Trish. I remember her. It's worth it. But it's worth it. And the look on her face, I'll never forget it. And I always think of that. Um, so anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, sorry. Um... So some of the programs that are in this um, RISE 2025 is TOPU, which is Building Corporate Indigenous Leadership, um, TAHI, Accredited Coaching, uh, Internationally Accredited Coaching Program um, for Wahine Māori, Pacific Island, and I think uh, Indigenous, because they have, they have some scholarships um, for First Nations of Canada, um, Australia, uh, Pacific Islands, and New Zealand. Uh, another one is TOR, which is a graduate wellbeing program with Auckland University. Uh, HIWA is an e-commerce business program. And HAPU, which is coaching agency services. So, you know, the, it's grown from Tahi being the first um, arm of the whiki and, and grown and grown and grown um, with a partnership with Shopify um, to Two businesses got that, um, and not, I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but I think it was Kahal and Rise Twenty Twenty Five um, that had that partnership last year. Um, so really, really interested in in checking out some of those programs um, and seeing what that could look like uh, for me. Um, another thing that uh, she spoke about um, quite in depth was being a wahine in a male-dominated space. And how, one of the questions was, how do, you, how do you handle that? Like, how do you keep yourself safe in that? Um, emotionally safe, you know, uh, intellectually safe. So her advice was she is very, very articulate in her tikanga and kawa and the boundaries that she sets for herself before she goes in to any board 
um, and she ensures that they understand clearly her expectations and what she will do and what she won't do, what she will allow and what she won't allow. And if that board is not in that, in that you know, doesn't think like that or doesn't, you know, provide that, then she refuses to go on the board, you know. And being that articulate about what you can offer and what you expect to receive and that reciprocity and what you will allow. Um, so her whakaro was, it's kind to be clear, it's unkind not to be clear, and that it must come from a place of aroha, which really resonated with me. Um, she talked about an emotional loop. You know, um, she was asked about mindset and mind growth. Um, how do you, when you um, feel like you're not worthy, you're not good enough, then something happens, eh? Like you don't get a contract or you don't get the job or the relationship breaks down or whatever it is, something happens which reinforces that belief for you that you're not worthy and you're not good enough. And so then that then follows on to your behaviour. So you don't, maybe don't apply for that next contract or you don't apply for that job that you really want to do or you blame everybody else for why that wasn't successful. Um, and so it starts to play out in your behaviours which then leads to you you looking for more evidence that you're not good enough and that you're not worthy enough. And then it just loops back around. So you're back at the start of, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. Something else happens, confirms it. Your behaviour dictates is dictated by you confirming that you're not good enough for yourself. Eh? And before you know it, you're looping again. And she said, you know, you need to ask yourself these questions and you need to be the circuit breaker of that loop. Is that behaviour behavior serving me? And being really reflective of that, is it actually serving you? Um, by you blaming everybody else? By you not applying for that contract or you not applying for that job or whatever it is? Is it serving my whanau? And is it serving my greater purpose? And back to what your why is. Why are you doing what you're doing? Um, she talked about um, uh, being uncomfortable and Jay Mace, Jay, May, Jay, Jace Mayer uh, talked about that as well. Being comfortable being uncomfortable because that's when you grow. That's when you learn. That's when you um, find new skills is when you're uncomfortable. And how do you push through that uncomfort and grab onto all the opportunity, learn the new skill, really reflect on yourself, is it a skill I need? Or what What am I missing? What, what am I missing here? I really like that. Um, she was also asked, how does she make a decision when she's offered an opportunity? And she talked about traffic lights, right? So... Green is go, obviously. Orange is pause and red is stop. And so how do you, when you are um, offered something or confronted with something, where are you at? Does it match everything with you? Um, is it ticking all your boxes and you're getting a green light and listening to your intuition, feeling the energy of the space? Or do you need to stop and think about it? Um, how is that contributing to my bigger purpose? Will that serve my whānau? Will that serve me? And does it contribute to my bigger purpose? And if it doesn't, you're at a red light, a, you know, orange, slow down, have a proper look. Be prepared to stop or be prepared to go, a. Red light, stop. Just don't, just don't do it, a. She talked about um, spiritual beings, we're, that we're spiritual beings have a, having a physical experience. And I love the way that she personalised the question and answer time and stayed way longer than she was meant to. 
um, and just wanted to answer everybody's questions. And there's some, some beautiful whakaro come from the floor, um, from the tawira. Um, all questions that we're probably all thinking, you know, um, how do you, why do you, you know, I, I just, probably the, the biggest thing that I've loved about this program is the absolutely amazing guest speakers that we have been privy to speak with and they give their emails and we can email them and ask them questions and join their programs and all of the things um, and they're exceptional exceptional amazing people that have done amazing things around the world um, you know and it just it just makes it all seem possible even though you feel like you're all of a sudden you you know one minute you're kind of like a big fish in a small pond and now you're like plankton in a in a Olympic swimming pool. Do you know what I mean? And but that it's all possible, you know, and I love that they're indigenous, you know, she was from Topiri Maunga, Hipiko He Tanifa, eh? Went all around the world, did all the amazing things, but always came home. Came home and bought all the things that she learned. Oh, I I love that stuff, eh? Um yeah, so I really enjoyed that corridor. I I really, really enjoyed the um the question and answer time and her her absolute positive space and genuine positive kōrero that was really individualised. And oh yeah, that was really cool because it could may not always be that way. But she was amazing um and excited about there being so many of us going into this space and um yeah, I'm really excited to have a look at her programs. I need to do my other mahi first, otherwise I'll get shiny rabbits. Um, and I'm already sus for my training for the next two years. Um, but, oh shit, it's 22 minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, check her out, check the program out. Rise 2025, um, Indigenous Wahine um, programs. Her name was Rachel Petero. Um, absolutely amazing amazing wahine um hopefully i get to meet her one day and i can have a yarn and chew on her ear but anyway have a fabulous evening namahe